Greetings and salutations, travelers of the internet. Welcome to the Lit Round Table. I'm Joseph. And I'm Anna. We'll be your wise or not so wise mentors for today's audio adventure into all things storytelling. And today we are going to be talking specifically about our favorite characters in specific franchises. Yes, because it's too broad to just... I mean, I could probably pick an ultimate favorite character, but... I cannot. It would not be fair. I definitely need to have it broken down to multiple franchises. Otherwise, I will lose sleep trying to decide. (laughs) Right, which is more fun to break it down anyway. Yes. And give everyone a a fighting chance in their own universe. Yes. So first, we are going to start with the franchise that kind of started it all. For both of us. Yes. Before we get into that, though, sorry, Uh, I forgot we were going to explain that we are recording some of these um, on the same day. So we're not necessarily always going to have an update for what we are currently reading or watching because it won't have changed in the, you know, hour break between recordings. So we may not always give that update um, just so you're aware. We, we do want to include that a lot for the first parts of the podcast, but since we're recording this on the same day as another one, it doesn't really make sense to do that this time. Yes, it is the same. Still reading Wheel of Time. <laughs> Still playing Ghost of Tsushima in The Last of Us Part Two. Still in between reading, but planning to read Daughter of the Pirate King. <laughs> there <Still>. you go. <laughs> and still watching Avatar. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I I wanted to make sure we got that in. No, you're fine. Yeah, I had that in my notes and I forgot, so thank you. It's all good. Okay, so, favorite characters, and the first franchise we'll be visiting is the one that, like I said, started it all for us, Star Wars. Oh, I thought you were going to say Lord of the Rings. You tricked me. I faked you out. (laughs) Star Wars. Okay. Because I think we watched Star Wars before... Oh, for Either sure. Of us did anything Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings related? So, it's Star the original Wars. series, yes. Right. So we're actually going to split Star Wars up into three. We're going to do our favorite characters from the original, prequel, and sequel trilogies. So first, let's go release order. Let's start with the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. And I will ask you first, who is your favorite original trilogy character? Also, these aren't villains. We are going to save villains for a future podcast. Yes. So be they, looking they deserve their own. They deserve their own podcast yeah. because there are some awesome villains in some of these franchises. So yes. who is your favorite non-antagonist of the original trilogy for Star Wars? Hmm. Well... I have a very special place in my heart for Princess Leia, and Mm. always will, but I think that my actual favorite character is Han Solo in the original series, because he was just so roguishly handsome, but also kind of a, I I don't need, a a scoundrel. (laughs) Scoundrel. To borrow their own. I like the sound of that. (laughs) Terminology. But he, like, just always really had a special like fondness for Han Solo and in the like extended universe books that I read was mostly invested in like the Han and Leia and Luke story for a mm-hmm. lot of that. And then Han and Leia's kids. So, but Han, Han Solo for sure. Yeah. How about you? For me, my favorite original trilogy character that is not a villain. It's kind of, See, I also like Han Solo, but I don't think he was my favorite. Luke wasn't my favorite. I mean, he gets better, but in the first one, he's kind of whiny. Mm-hmm. I might have to go with, I might have to go with R two D two. I always forget about the droids, but they are just lovely. Yeah, R two D two might be my favorite because he is. It's I love what they did with his character and that he, you never understand what he's saying. But but you do you do, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. he is sassy. <laughs> yes, Ugh. yes. His whistles are the best. Yeah, for sure. And I remember just being so fascinated by him when I was little and like trying to do like the beep do wee, like try to do the noises. Yeah. And yeah, so I'm gonna yeah yeah. 
I'm not going to do that into the mic. <laughs> I, I turned away a little bit and, and make and the mic it. peak. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go with R2-D2. That's a good, solid and choice. Really, he is probably one of the most instrumental characters in the entire franchise. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of a lot of stuff would not have happened if it wasn't for R2-D2. No, a lot of people would have died very <laughs> early on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I mean, if he hadn't repaired the shields on the Naboo cruiser in episode one. That would have been it. The end. (laughs) Nobody finds Anakin. Padme dies. (laughs) Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn die. Yeah, they get blown away trying to leave the planet. Yeah, And Anakin never gets discovered on Tatooine, and he just becomes a really good pod racer. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And just becomes a millionaire or something, I don't know. Or just stays a slave. Yeah, or just stays a slave. Which is more likely. <laughs> so yeah, R2-D2. That's my choice. That's a good one. Yeah. So now next would be prequel trilogy. Right. If we're going release order. So who's your favorite prequel trilogy character? I know mine right off the right off the bat. I'm wondering if ours will be the same. It might be. Because I think I have to say Obi-Wan. Because he's, mm-hmm. he's kind of a twit in the first one. But everyone's kind of a twit in the first one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so I think it's gotta be Obi-Wan, but I do, I again have a very fond place in my heart for Queen Amidala and mm-hmm. Padme's character, just cause I, I do appreciate a good, strong female character. And but, that hair game, and strong. Hair, and her costumes. <laughs> like I wanted to be Padme, but I just loved Obi-Wan. He's so sassy and mm-hmm. smart and just a gem. Yes. So mine is the same. I would definitely choose Obi-Wan Kenobi for the prequels. Um, He is just, I feel like, I mean, people obviously like him, but I feel like, I don't know about underrated, but like, I I think a lot of people are quick to choose Anakin or I have I really hesitate to speak at all for the Star Wars fandom because they are so yeah okay yeah sometimes. it's very diverse <laughs> and people have all kinds of different favorite and very characters. strong opinions but I feel like Obi Wan is just he's reliable he's got a killer sense of humor he's hilarious you know all of his decisions make sense you know yeah he's very reasonable yes. Um, but I also would say close second is Yoda for the prequels. Yeah. I, um, when he, like mm-hmm. in episode two, when he walks in after Dooku kind of manhandles Obi-Wan and Anakin and then Yoda walks in, I remember people in the theater freaking out oh, when Yoda walks in. That was like one of the coolest scenes. Yeah. And it's just that made Yoda like one of the coolest characters in my, in my head. I agree. So... I like most Star Wars characters. It would be harder for right. me to pick ones that I did not like at all. Um, and so I like Yoda, but he's not my... He's not He's not he's top not, tier for no, you. No, I, I kind of feel like he was underutilized a little bit, but... Yeah, you could probably argue that. Yeah. Because he's pretty OP. Yeah, he's he's like... I mean, he's the Gandalf figure, you know? Yeah. He's the Except wise. Except Gandalf gets way more like time to actually like... Do stuff. Participate. Yeah. <laughs> and Yoda's kind of a behind the scenes. But when when you do get Yoda involved. It's amazing. It's like, oh, you really messed up if you got Yoda yeah. involved. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's the prequels. How about the sequel trilogy? Or I think we were going to, okay, we were going to say. Include all the new movies. All of the movies that have been made since Disney took over Star Wars. Right. So, so that... this is going to include Rogue One and Solo yeah. as well as the sequel trilogy. Right. So, who do you think? This one's harder for me because they're fresher and I haven't lived with these characters as long as, you know, we live with the original series and the prequels. Um, So they're a little fresher in my brain. Mm -hmm. Um, I really loved Rogue One as a movie. Oh, me too. Um, It's great. Um, And so I I really like Jin Erso's character in that Mm -hmm. a lot. But I also really liked Ray's character too. So, but I think I have to pick Jin because it was. I think her motivation was more clear. Yes. And they really did a good job of establishing that quickly with what happened with her parents. Mm-hmm. How she got like recruited by this freedom fighter. And... Right. We knew exactly who she was the whole time. Yeah. Even though other people didn't know who she was, we knew who she was. Right. So it was nice being in on the 
on the secret. Which Ray was kind of inverse. Right. Where Nobody other, other knew. people... Well, Apparently knew. Well, it was weird because other people <laughs> seemed to know. Yeah. But like, did they? Because I guess they didn't. But at, in The Force Awakens, other people seemed to know who she was. Right. But she didn't know and we didn't know. So there's all the speculation, you know. Right. I understand why you'd pick Jyn Erso over Rey. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, I... Ugh, there's So I also really liked Rogue One. And there were some really awesome characters in that. And I guess I just have a soft spot for droids because I just remembered about K2SO from Rogue oh, One. Oh, yes. And I, one, I love the person who, who um, it is voice Alan acted. Alan Tudyk, right? Tudyk? Alan Tudyk? Tudyk? Yeah. I. How do you say his last name? I Yeah, I forget his last name. But from Firefly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um. It's T U D Y K. Yeah. However you say that name. I love that guy. And <laughs> he's pretty phenomenal. K two S O was one of my favorite droids. He like he's up there with R two in like favorite droid category. Yeah. Um Yeah. But after that, there's Chirrut Imway, the mm-hmm. the blind force ninja. Um, he was amazing. Um and yeah, I guess my favorite my favorites since Disney has taken over both from Rogue uh, Rogue One, but if I had to pick someone from the sequel trilogy, maybe Ben Solo. But well, okay, I, he, I also love Ben Solo. Yeah. Um, but he's in the movie for in the series for so short a time that it felt unfair to pick him. Right, because okay, because we're making the <laughs> distinction the di- between Kylo Ren and Ben Solo. Yes, Ben Solo isn't until like the very end of Rise of Skywalker. Spoiler yeah. alert. If you haven't seen that yet, he yeah. has a redemption. Which, where have you been if you haven't seen right. it yet? <laughs> they do give him a redemption arc, and he does come back to the light side and become Ben Solo again. So, right. which was one of my favorite parts of the whole movie, yeah. was when Ben Solo comes in. Um, that was all I wanted from that. After yeah. after The Force Awakens, all I wanted was a redemption arc for Kylo Ren. And, and since they did make that happen, I can live happily with this yeah. series. There's a lot of other stuff with the series that I have problems with, but at least we got the redemption arc. Yes. That we needed. Yes. So. So yeah, I'm I'm still holding true to K2SO though for my favorite. That's um, fair. Since Disney took over, I love that. I love that droid. I love that robot. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, throw a small wrench in our plan here and and say that my favorite extended universe character. Uh oh. I've got a couple. From the books. So from these the aren't books. canon. These are these, not canon these are anymore. From, these are from... <laughs> All oh. the books that I've read. <laughs> um, But my... It's like Mara Jade. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. I love that lady. She's amazing. And sassy as I'll get out. And just like... Eats the crap out of Luke Skywalker. And then falls in love with him. And it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um... So, like, she's one of my all-time favorites. And then I also really love Jaina Solo, who is Han and Leia's daughter in the Extended Universe. Mm. And she's, like, amazing. Not Jason. Why don't you like Jason, Han? Um, for those of you that don't know, Jason Solo goes very dark. <laughs> <laughs> and, and because I did love him. Yeah. And then he went super dark and I was like, oh no, oh no, I can't love him anymore. So I guess the the new um, series, like the new canon trilogy, did play into the one of Han and Leia's kids goes evil mm-hmm. motif, which um, I'm kind of here for. Like I don't have a problem with their son going dark in yeah. the movies because I was primed for that. Um. But before he goes dark, Jason Solo is one of my favorites. But he goes really dark. Yeah. So. I read some things because I knew that I was never going to be able to get through all those books. So I did yeah. cheat and read some things about the plot. Mm-hmm. And I think I actually know things that you don't know. You do because I haven't, I'm not up to date on all of those. I own a lot of them, but I have not read all of them. So Very dark. He goes very, very yes. dark. He yeah. does some atrocious things. He really does. I know he does. <laughs> so, um. Interesting though. Yeah. Nice. Let me throw. I just thought I'd throw that in there since we were talking you know, Star I'll Wars and ex- I was staring at. I'll pick. The... I'll pick an extended universe okay. character just because I know that he exists, and this is me not even knowing anything about him at all. But I'm going to go with Lubaka. 
the oh. Wookiee Jedi. Oh no, he's wonderful. That is such Chewbacca's nephew. Yeah, because oh. that's just such an interesting concept to me of a Wookiee Jedi. Oh, he's great. And he's so, he's like one of the best. I would love to see that in a Star Wars movie someday. A Wookiee Jedi. I yes. would love that so much. Oh. So, you know, they're gonna still make movies, so it could still happen. It could. It could. So yeah, that's my favorite character, even though I've never read anything about him or a book with him in it. But that's just he's, purely based off of the knowledge that I have. I have 13 books that he's in. You can borrow one of them. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> okay. And now we're going to move on to the franchise that is the nearest and dearest to our hearts. And that is Lord of the Rings. We are going to, we are going to have, um, we're just, uh, the what's the word I'm looking for? We are going to separate this from the The hobbit Hobbit. yeah so we are going to pick a favorite character from the hobbit as well and i think we'll do this is this is going to be like a book slash movie thing where like we might have a favorite book character and a different favorite movie character i don't know we'll see but here's lord of the rings okay what do you think anna who's your favorite lord of the rings (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) surprise me just try to surprise me this is no surprise to anybody who knows me well at all probably um my i have to say that my favorite character is aragorn of course (laughs) um because he is the king arthur character and i just the the idea of a returning king and um like i there's just a lot I, i i could write essays about why aragorn is so um moving for me and so and I'm like even struggling for words because it's just like, this is the character I would pick for my all time favorite character. It would be Aragorn. Yeah. <laughs> so I know, <laughs> I know, you know, so there's just the way that he is motivated and moves through the world is very compelling to me. He's very loyal and very determined and very righteous in a way. Um, and it's just like through and through a good guy um, and like the best guy. Absolutely the guy you want on your side when it comes to anything that's going to involve conflict. So he's my favorite character. But he's very quickly followed up by Eowyn mm. because mm-hmm. I, I just identify so much with Eowyn and her struggle of being of like wanting to be able to do more for her people and be more than what, like, the norm says she should be. Mm-hmm. And I just have oodles of respect for her and and relate to her in a lot of ways. So, and th- that's the same book or movie. Those characters are mm-hmm. my top two for sure. Sure. Forever. Yeah. Forever and always. <laughs> yes. All right. My what about favorite. You? I'm, I'm actually really curious to hear what yours are because I know that you have a more... I think I know who yours will be, but I'm not sure if it's changed or not. So I do have to split mine up between book and movie. Okay. And you'll know why when I say who. I think I know why. Just by you saying that, I know who at least one of them is. You could probably guess now. Yeah. So my favorite Lord of the Rings character from the books is Faramir. Yeah. He's up there for me too. For a lot of the same reasons. Yes. As Aragorn. He is just a class act. He is Mm -hmm. one of the noblest and most worthy of praise like people yeah. like uh, he's just so good and so like every everything that he says is so insightful and so accurate and true and like like the books say he has the blood of old Numenor and he's he's wise beyond his years yeah and he's just so good and he's so nice to Sam and Frodo he, and in the movie, he's a real jerk. <laughs> they really yeah. tried to invent a conflict there just for the sake of tension right. and for drama. But really, in the books, he was just such a good guy and like mm-hmm. so willing to help them. And he has some of the most quotable lines. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say it's some of the best lines that come out of The Lord of the Rings as far as like social commentary goes, come from Faramir. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like I don't like, mm-hmm. or I don't love the arrow for his swiftness or the sword for its brightness or the, or the soldier for his, or something for their yeah. glory. I love only that, which they defend. Yeah. It's like, Oh man, right. you are 
you know, you know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I, just to add to that, I, I really do feel like Faramir and Aragorn are very similar as far as character development goes in that mm-hmm. they have very different backstories, but they have very similar approaches and opinions on like, why are we fighting? Yeah. It's not for the sake of fighting. It's for protecting that, which is good in this world. Um, both very noble in their motivations. Mm-hmm. So, and in the movies, they even tried to give Faramir a little glimpse of that, like when he shoots the Haradrim soldier off yeah. of the Mumakil and he falls down, and he's like, um, "You know, we don't know this guy's story. Um, why is he here? Did he think like was he tricked into coming here? Did would he rather mm-hmm. be home instead of here fighting?" And mm-hmm. I was like, "You know what? Good for you. That was very insightful." And yeah. like. What, like, yes, let's do more of, like, actually humanizing the people that we fight in wars because too right. often we try to dehumanize them to make ourselves feel better about what we're doing. Yeah. And so I thought Absolutely. that was really good commentary. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so Faramir is my favorite book character. I Yeah, I, I also love Faramir. Yeah. He's up there for me. Mm-hmm. So for movies, since I'm not going to pick Faramir for the movies. I would also agree with that. <laughs> he's not as good. We're on the same page when it comes to Faramir. Yeah. Um, so for the movies, I am going to go, uh, I thought I knew, but now I'm second guessing myself because I love all of them so much. I know. So I am going to go with, see, it used to be Gandalf. That's what I, yeah. But now... Because I've always loved Gandalf because I like like the grandfatherly figure that he is mm-hmm. to the hobbits, and like the yeah. mentor figure he is for Aragorn. And the metamorphosis that he goes through is significant. Yeah, yeah. But I think I have to, so he gets an honorable mention. Okay. But I think I have to go with my boy Sam. Oh. Because yeah, Frodo wouldn't have gotten far without Sam. No. Yes, Frodo knows that. Yeah. Very self aware of those hobbits. Yeah. Sam is like just the epitome of heavy sigh for Sam. The, the loyal best friend who yes. would like ride or die. Like he Absolutely. will do anything for you. Like if you're, if you're his best friend, he will do anything for you. And it's just, he's just great. Heartwarming. Yeah. I love that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also really just love all of them. Like even as you're talking about them, like, Oh Yeah. Yeah. They're just so The great. Hobbits are great. Merry and Pippin. Huh. Mm. Yep. So there you go. There's, and we could talk at length all day, but we're we going really to, we're going to move on. Um, <laughs> okay. Let's do the Hobbit next. So we, we can get Okay. This okay. Yeah. Quick. Let's, let's skip uh, to the Hobbit. So who is your favorite character from the Hobbit? I actually have a harder time with this one because it is such a large cast. And in the mm-hmm. book, the dwarves are not as, they're unique, but. They're not as unique. Not like in the movie. It's it's much harder to tell them apart. In the movie, you can tell they tried really hard to make them all unique. Yes. And have their own personalities and like attire. Yes. Um, I was going to say that it's Bilbo because he's the hero. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I do admire Bilbo. Um, but I think I'm actually going to have to. It feels weird to say it. But I, but it might actually be Bjorn. Mm, okay. <laughs> the bear man. <laughs> no, that's fine. Because I love that scene. It's yeah. like the best. This is almost the best scene in the whole book. When Gandalf's introducing the dwarves yeah. to him and just keeps bringing them out. And he's yes. like, what is happening? <laughs> and Gandalf is genuinely hilarious in The Hobbit. Uh-huh. Yeah. I have a much harder time picking a favorite character in The Hobbit because I love all of them. Mm-hmm. A lot. Um, not so much the, the dwarves. <laughs> I mean, I enjoy the dwarves, but they're, I guess Bomber would be my favorite dwarf because he's the fat one that gets. Yeah. That like falls in the river river. and falls asleep. Yes. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I I guess I'm going to, I'm going to say Bayorn today, but I also really like Bard the Bowman. In the movie. He doesn't really get that much. He doesn't get much in the book. book In the movie though, he's, he's a solid character. Yeah, I agree. So, but who, who's your pick? The Hobbit for me I'm going to have to go with, see, like you said, I'm going to go with Gandalf because yeah. Gandalf in The Hobbit is hilarious yes. and witty. And like but he's from not his, there for a lot of it either. True. He's, he ducks in and he's out. He's unpredictable. Very. Um, which is also something I kind of like. Yeah. 
Um, like how when the goblins kidnap them in the mountain, I'm pretty sure yeah. Gandalf just like vanishes. He just takes off. Yeah. He's like, I'm out. Like, <laughs> just <laughs> left everyone else out to dry. Yeah. You'll figure it out. Bye. Threw them under the bus or mountain in this case. Just just yeah. <laughs> literally pieced out. He's like, yeah. you guys got this, right? Bye. Well, and, and then <laughs> once they got to Mirkwood, he did the same thing. He was like, follow the road. Don't get off the road. Yeah. I'm going to go do something else for a well, while. Because I think Tolkien, It's really dangerous if you get off the road. Don't do it. Yeah, I think Tolkien realized, like, if Gandalf tags along the whole time, it's not really that exciting. Because yeah. he's, he's going to be, like, the answer to all their problems. So right. he just decides to go away sometimes and that's fine but i i like how witty he is and how like all of his dialogue in the hobbit Ugh. is it's way more kind of whimsical and like yeah than the, the hobbit Lord of the Rings. in general is more whimsical than yeah the Lord of the Rings. like from gandalf's first opening when bilbo says good morning he's like oh what do you mean do you mean that <laughs> it is a morning to be good on or is it a good morning or <laughs> it's like, yes all of them at once, I suppose. And so it's like, it's just, yeah. I love that first interaction. And the movie actually got that first interaction down yeah. really well. well. Yeah. And I really like that. And McKellen can do no wrong. Yeah. And Martin Freeman was a good choice for yes. Bilbo, too. He was Agreed. great. Agreed. So that's me for The Hobbit. I will go with my OG favorite and go with Gandalf. Gandalf's a good choice. Yep. It really, they're all pretty tied in my brain. I just felt like saying they weren't to be... Today. And I'm gonna I be do, hipster. I'm gonna be. Well, I, 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 he's super fun in the book. Yeah. He's fun in the movie too, but they mm-hmm. messed. Them. Anyway, we're gonna talk about the Hobbit movies a different time. Yes, we will. <laughs> we will go in depth on the yes. Hobbit movies a different time. Yes. That might be a couple podcasts because be. there's a lot to talk about. Um, and Lord of the Rings movies too. We can go. Yeah. Okay, we're going to switch gears from Tolkien. <laughs> we got because to. If we don't, don't worry. We're going to be we're stuck, gonna be stuck here. here. We're moving on to the MCU. <laughs> oh. So here we go. Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is tough because there are so many. Yeah, you go first. So many superheroes. You've got to go first this time because i got to think about it for a second. So I have to go with Spider-Man. Really? Because he has been my favorite Marvel superhero yeah. forever. And I love Tom Holland as Spider-Man. And I have really enjoyed all of the Spider-Man movies. I loved yeah. Homecoming and Far From Home. Like what they did with Mysterio was really creative. Yes. And the way they tied Mysterio into like the other movies, how he was like this disgruntled Stark Industries employee. I thought that was really clever the way they did that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm I love Spider-Man. But if I if I went with my my gut with um like if I wasn't gonna take like past bias into <laughs> into yeah. account and pick someone new, I might have to go with Thor hmm. because he. I know people don't really like the standalone Thor movies except for Ragnarok. That's the one outlier where everybody loved that movie. But I love like how he's like a god figure, but he's also humanized and and has a lot of flaws. And he has a lot of flaws yeah. that they delve into a lot. And um, I love everything with Loki, too. Like, their mm. interactions are always really fun. I, and Loki's I also, a villain, though. No, I know, but I'm, I'm just I'm saying, saying that I, I enjoy the scenes where Thor and Loki are on screen yes. together. Yeah, they um, have good chemistry. Yes, because of their chemistry. And so, yeah, and I love, um, like, his dialogue is always really hilarious. Yeah. Like in the first one, another and he smashes the mug. Yes. So. Oh. Yeah. You raise good points. Mm-hmm. This is really hard because it's really it is hard. such an expansive universe. I mean, you've got Iron Man, Captain America. You've yeah. got, uh, there's so many. I think I will ultimately have to pick Captain America. I had a feeling. But it's for similar reasons that I choose Aragorn. Yeah. Um, that's that loyal, devout, to the cause kind of mentality. Mm-hmm. He's also kind of the leader of the Avengers. He yeah. he assumes that role frequently. Yes. But I also really enjoy Black Panther a lot. Yes. So, But again, very similar character to the Aragorn Captain America. I definitely have a type when it comes to You do. Characters. You really do. <laughs> So, which will just become more and more apparent. Han Solo is like an outlier for me. <laughs> yeah, that's the one instance where you kind of like the rogue scoundrel yeah. character. That's not typical for you no, at all. No, it's not. So I don't. I don't know. 
if I that grew, was I your thing, I grew up to really appreciate loyalty. Apparently, if that was your thing, you would definitely have picked Iron Man instead of Captain America. That's true, but because... I I enjoy the Iron Man movies a lot, and mm-hmm. I enjoy Robert Downey Jr. a lot. Yeah, but he is not always a likable character. Yeah, no, he he makes mistakes. They I all mean, make the whole mistakes. Age of Ultron thing. You know, Age of I, Age of Ultron. I have a hard time with that movie. There's just a I, there's a lot of things happening in that movie that just. First of all, sorry, this is a tangent, but choosing James Spader to voice anything <laughs> is super distracting for me, <laughs> because all I can hear is Daniel Jackson from Stargate the movie, and stupid Robert California yes. from The Office. So it was very distracting for me, which isn't really fair because he is an incredible voice actor, but yeah. oh I was gosh. just Robert very distracted. California. Robert California yes. is one of my favorite Office characters because he's so bizarre. Yeah. And you know what? We're just going to throw a spontaneous favorite character from The Office. Oh. <laughs> and I'm going to say... Um, Are you really gonna pick Robert California? No, okay. but no. If if it <laughs> I was, was villain, I think I think he he's counts a as a, he's an antagonist yes. for the Office people. I would pick Dwight. <laughs> um, mm. for sure, it's Dwight. <laughs> I also really love Dwight a lot. Bears, beats Battlestar, Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> I deem you impish. Uh, yeah, it's probably Dwight for me too. I love Jim, but but Dwight is so much more interesting. I feel like if I knew if I knew someone like Jim in real life, I would think they were such a jerk. (laughs) Yeah, he's he's got his nose up in the air. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't know. Like he's yeah, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, Dwight's just weird. He's bizarre. But I love him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd probably pick Dwight too. Anyway, so that was uh, Marvel, Marvel, and The Office. So. uh, all right, now we're just going Disney. I just want to clarify. I do appreciate Michael Scott's character, but the cringe factor for Michael Scott is way too high for me. Oh, yeah. I, he he makes my skin crawl. Yeah. I love him for it. Not as he, much as Robert California. No, but he does make my skin crawl. <laughs> yeah. Not in an evil way. Robert California's got like some evil vibes. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Scott is just Secondhand oblivious awkwardness. and super nice. And like, how are you that dumb? Yes. <laughs> Which what is the we, point of his character. Exactly. Exactly. Anyway, so next up is Disney. Oh. So let's go let's go with like the uh um like the Disney princess movies. Like we're talking Aladdin, Fine Sleeping classics. Beauty. Yeah, yeah. Pocahontas. Okay. <laughs> Pocahontas. Joseph knows mine. <laughs> My favorite is Pocahontas. Yeah. Hands down. Mm-hmm. She's just amazing. Great music in that movie. She is like strong and fierce, and um, I'm I'm going to um, recognize that there is some cognitive dissonance for me with her because I know that this particular portrayal of Pocahontas is not at all historically accurate, and does diminish what Native Americans went through right. when colonization was happening, and I have a lot of feelings about that. Mostly deeply regretful feelings <laughs> yeah. about what happened to those people. Um, and is still happening to them. Now, I don't want to get too political on here, but I just want to throw that out there. That I recognize that Pocahontas as a story is problematic, mm-hmm. but it is still a beautifully done movie and does offer commentary on that that I think is valuable. And if that's going to be your introduction to how Native Americans were treated, it's not a bad introduction to start the conversation on how things should have gone differently and how people deserve to be treated with dignity, Mm -hmm. even if they're different from you. So I just want to throw that out there. Yes. (laughs) Because I I know that it is not something that Native Americans probably appreciate a whole lot. Um, right. That is it, one of the more controversial Disney princess movies, yes, I think. Because it romanticizes something that was horrible. Right. So, also, who would pick John Smith over Cocoam? Cocoam was hot. <laughs> Just gonna say. He won a catch. And pasty John Smith comes on. Pasty blonde total boy. Total jerk. <laughs> Never mind that, like, he was actually historically. Could have been Pocahontas's father, <laughs> but Ugh. yeah. Anyway, 
So, but Pocahontas is my favorite Disney character because she is incredible. Sure. So, sorry. Didn't want to get political, but felt like it needed to be said. Yeah. Well, she's also a character in, in the movie um, that is not afraid to stand up to yeah, her father or mm-hmm. to a system that she disagrees with. Yeah. And she's very headstrong. And yeah. So I totally understand why you choose her. Yeah. Um, for me, for a uh, Disney character, <laughs> I was so wrapped up in, in your I explanation that I forgot to think about who mine is. I really like, um, I really like Flynn Rider. Oh, yeah. He's that rogue character. I also love Zachary, Zachary Levi. Levi. Me too. Um, Zachary Levi, if you're listening to this, I am single. And I would be willing he? to move to Texas. Is he is he single? I believe so. Oh, well. He's not listening to this, but I'm I just throwing it out into the universe. I'd take you for a brother-in-law, Zachary Levi. That'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> just throwing it out into the universe. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yikes. So, You're yeah, I think... quite a bit older than I am, but... <laughs> I think I'm not, going... Not impossible. I think... <laughs> Shut up. I'm <laughs> choosing Flynn Rider. <laughs> That's a good choice. He's, he's a great character. Yeah. Fun. And he has a great arc. Yes. Um, he's yeah. kind of a Han Solo character. Yeah. He's he's that scoundrel character that, you know, was an outlaw, gone good yeah. and noble. And yeah. Yeah. If I didn't love Pocahontas so deep into my core, I would probably pick Flynn Rider. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's who I'm going with. Next up, this one is kind of niche. Stargate. Some of you... We've alluded to this a couple ...aren't times. familiar with Stargate, but it was this awesome sci-fi show that showed on the Sci-Fi Channel, right? Yeah. And it had 10 seasons and a couple of... Spinoffs. Spinoff shows. Stargate Atlantis, Stargate Which, Universe. Stargate Atlantis featured um, Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa. So those Momoa. of you that are Jason Momoa fans, you can get some early Jason Momoa. In Stargate Atlantis. Yes. Which he is fantastic in. Big, beautiful dreads. Yes. It's as glorious as you think it is. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yes, I love Jason Momoa. So yes, uh, Stargate. I think let's So we're sticking do... to the original yeah, SG-1. SG-1. Okay. SG-1. So who is your favorite Stargate character? All four of the members of SG-1. The original members. Yes. 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 Good clarification. So seasons one through eight are all four of those main guys. So Samantha Carter, Jack O'Neill, Teal'c, and Daniel Jackson all have very special places in my heart. Sure. You're going to find that I have a special place in my heart for most characters. Yeah. It's almost like you're a writer. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But I think I have to go... I, this is hard because they're all so unique. Mm -hmm. What What a great show... To, like, have... Because it's easy to get into, like, a a trap of, like, kind of the same characters over and over again. But they are each so unique and so developed. It's just... Guys, if you haven't watched Stargate SG-1, the first couple seasons are very 90s. It's dated, but but it's so so good. good. (laughs) If you like sci-fi, it's amazing. And it doesn't always make sense. Like, some of the rules that they make... Don't always make sense. There is there's some suspension suspension of disbelief you have to have. But that's true with any speculative fiction. Yeah. So, um, but I think I've got to. Oh, it's really hard. Do you want me to say who mine is, and then you can pick someone different yes. for? Um, yes, because I really do love all four of them for different reasons. So my favorite is hands down Teal. <laughs> Arguably the one that has the fewest amount of lines. But, but that face can act, man. Yes. <laughs> Christopher Judge oh. also voiced Kratos in the new God of War game oh, for cool. PS4. I love that man. He yes. is amazing. He is and incredible. as Teal'c, I don't know where exactly uh, Teal'c falls in like his acting career. If that was like one of his super early things or how long know. he's been acting. I don't know. But he's kind of like the uh, the tank of the group. Like he oh, handles yeah. a lot of the fighting and he's he like you said he doesn't talk a lot his famous line is indeed so yes. he just he says indeed all the time yeah <laughs> but some of the moments where you get his interaction with some of the other kookier characters and like it's just 
amazing because you can tell he's so how stoic. much. Yeah, he's so stoic, but you could tell how much he loves all of them. Yeah, and would die for any of them. Absolutely. And it's and he's also an alien, so yes. you have that interesting twist there too. So yeah. yes, it's definitely teal. I suppose I could pick someone who's not in the main four and really throw it off. Who General Hammond is? <laughs> I do love Hammond. Yeah. Um. No, I think I, I think I've got to go with Samantha Carter. Mm-hmm. Even, I, it's closely tied with Jack O'Neill, probably. But I also really, Daniel Jackson gets kind of annoying sometimes because um, he's pretty self righteous, not in the mm-hmm. positive Aragorn righteous kind of way. <laughs> but, um, but I think I got to go with my girl because she is just like kicking butt, taking names. Mm-hmm. She's wicked smart and way smarter than anybody else on the team and just like really has to fight to be heard and appreciated a lot of the time. But she is killer. Yeah. And she's not bad with defending herself either. Oh no. She's a tough cookie. Yep. So. She gets she gets work done when there's a, a fight to be had yeah. for sure. It's and- Amanda Tapping who has also just that, that's the actress and she has done amazing things for women in speculative fiction. So mm-hmm. I just have a lot of respect for her too, as a person. She had her own show. What was that? Sanctuary. Sanctuary. It's also really good. I highly she's, recommend. She's also been in a couple seasons of Supernatural. Yeah. She's, she's done a lot of different stuff. Yeah. So she's incredible. Yeah. All right. Star Trek. This is easy. This is easy. Should we just three, two, one and say what our favorite character is at the same time? Is it the same? I think so. Okay. Three, Three, two, two one, one, Spock. Spock. Yeah. Yep. There's <laughs> something about that robot personality that is so endearing. Yeah. Because he is emotional. But. And I will still give honorary mention to Sulu. I love Sulu. Agreed. But Spock is just oh, and Bones. iconic. Dr. McCoy. Oh, <sighs> shoot. You're right. I do love Bones. He's great. Okay. One of us can be Spock. The other one can be Bones. And then. <laughs> well. We can share. We we can say it's split between the two. Okay. Basically, the two supporting roles that make Captain Kirk not be such a dummy sometimes. Nice, nice censorship there. <laughs> he, yeah, I mean, it is. He what can it be is. a jerk. He really can. Like, if it wasn't for those characters, I don't know if he'd be very. I don't know if I could stand watching him. <laughs> no, nothing again. William Shatner, I think, did a great job with the character. Oh yeah. And I have a lot of respect for William Shatner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, Spock and Bones are just. Like any okay, any TV show character that tends to have a different girlfriend every episode, yeah, I just don't like. Which is my main. Okay, this is like a really old show that I don't know how many of the people listening to this know about, but Magnum, oh, PI with Tom Selleck, yeah, he was notorious for also having a different girlfriend every other episode, and yeah. that's like the one thing I hated about that show. Everything was, else about that show is golden. Yes, I loved that show otherwise, but it's just, dude, Pick come one. on. <laughs> Pick one. You and I are didn't also have, both like, very he, monogamous people. <laughs> he actually had a wife at the time who just, like, wasn't with him, like the Vietnamese I think woman. it was believed that she was dead. Oh, sure. I don't think he knew that she was alive. Yeah. So that's also good. why James Kirk is kind of annoying. But Picard is awesome. Yeah. That's next gen. Yeah, we're talking OG. I haven't seen enough next gen to have an opinion, to be honest. I've seen mostly just the original trilogy. So yeah, it's not a trilogy, original or, series. Ugh, OS. original. I said series. OG, which is also wrong, but OS. Yeah. All right. Next up is Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> this one's interesting yeah. because it's hard to pick a character that's not Jack Sparrow, <laughs> because Jack Sparrow is just so stinking likable. Yeah. And hilarious, and you're so he's. Normally, I never pick the main character as my favorite character, but I don't he's know why. He's not really the main character. I mean, well, he from, is from like a from like. He's been in the franchise the longest, but yeah. I would say that if you just watch the first movie, the main character is Will, because That's the true. first character you see, and you follow his story through the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You follow all three of them, but. Yeah, you could yeah. definitely argue that Will is the main character. Mm-hmm. I would say that in like the cast, Johnny Depp was the one that had. I guess Orlando Bloom at the time also had. He had just come off the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, but so he had some like really current movie cred. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Johnny Depp had definitely been doing it longer than anybody else in the movie. 
I'm going to go Except with... maybe Gregory Peck, who's quite a bit older. Right. Oh, but... sorry. You you go first. Who's your favorite Pirates of the Caribbean? Oh, I don't... Uh, it is hard to not pick Jack. Yeah. Captain Jack Sparrow. Yes. I, th- I do think Captain Jack Sparrow is my favorite character. Mm-hmm. But if we're saying that he is, of course, the favorite character, and you have to pick somebody else, I would pick Elizabeth Swan. There you go. So... But it's, it's actually Captain Jack. Might have to go with... Okay, so those movies are ones that I definitely think of as purely entertainment and, like, they're just oh, yeah. fun to watch. Yeah. And I don't usually think too deeply about Pirates of the Caribbean. I mean, I, I love the story and everything, but y- you know what I mean? Like, it's not... I don't know if it tells any bigger picture as to, like... Well, there is some stuff for the East India Trading Company to be said about, like, corporate behavior yeah and so i guess okay i, I guess think, there is i don't think you're picking up on that though as a kid no it. not when i watched it i didn't care and even like as an adult i think if i went back and watched it my main takeaway wouldn't be like oh that east india trading company <laughs> yeah it would be was his dink as a jerk yeah What's so little guy's name i'm gonna go oh <laughs> Since i keep wanting to call him mr collins yeah Cutler beckett because <laughs> he's mr collins and brian Bridges. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i'm gonna go with barbosa oh Good choice. Because he's so entertaining to watch. Yes. In all of them. I loved him as the bad... Okay, it's kind of a cheat because he was the bad guy in the first one with the he villains. He is definitely but a bad guy. But I think... Well, but in the second and third... He's still... No, it's Davy he's Jones, on the good but guy he's, a, he's not really, though. But he's he just is. playing... No, he's just playing them. Mm. He's just playing them. He's a, but he's a pirate. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, but I suppose <laughs> you could also argue that Captain Jack is kind of a bad guy. Yeah, they're pirates. <laughs> oh. They pillage and plunder. Um, I'm looking up who the actor is for Barbosa because I said Gregory Peck and now I'm second guessing myself. No, it's not Gregory Peck. Peck. It's Jeffrey Rush. I am so Jeffrey sorry. Jeffrey Rush. I'm so sorry. Gregory I had a feeling Peck it was Jeffrey. Else. I couldn't remember the last name. Jeffrey Rush. I'm so sorry that I got... <laughs> I feel really bad. He is... <laughs> it's Gregory Peck. <laughs> he's um, very entertaining to watch as Barbosa. He is. Um, especially during the... Uh, uh, at World's End when he's marrying Will and Elizabeth on the ship. Gregory <laughs> Peck was such a bad callback name. Like, not even closely related to Who's Gregory Peck? What's he He's in? in To Kill a Mockingbird. He's Atticus Finch. Oh! I picked an old, old Hollywood actor that isn't alive yeah. anymore. So I apologize. I'm so sorry. You weirdo. Um, <laughs> he nope. died in 2003. My apologies. <laughs> I'm going with Barbosa and I'm sticking to it, even though he was the bad guy in the first one. I don't yeah. think he, you can call him a villain because the villain in the second and third one is clearly Davy Jones and Cutler Beckett. This is clear. You could also then make an argument for Jack Norrington. James Norrington. You said Jack. Did I? Sorry. James Norrington. James Norrington. I thought about him because he... He's very compelling in the last two. Is underrated. second and third, I guess. I shouldn't say last two because there are two, three other movies now. He does weird me out in the first one how he has the hots for Elizabeth Swan. And like you see them in the first scene and he's like... A grown man, and she's like twelve. <laughs> oh, y- yeah, the yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Like I want to know how old he was supposed <laughs> forgot, to be in that first scene. I forgot about that. But like, he looks like he's uh, at least twenty. That's because they use the same actor. I know, but it, but then later on, <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, now you have a white wig. Okay, <laughs> before you had a brown wig. Now you've got a white wig. But you I still for, look like you're in your twenties. And you've got the hots for this girl that you knew when she was 12. Yeah. So that weirds me out a little bit. Yeah. But. Well, if we're going to go that, if we're going to talk about that, then let's talk about Anakin and Padme. Nah, that's okay. We're moving on. <laughs> we don't have time for that. <laughs> okay. Um, Game of Thrones. Oh, that's, this is easy for me. Okay. Who's yours? Mine is Ned Stark. Oh, right. Like yeah. Rip. Rest in peace. So sad when he died. So early on. He was my favorite when I read the book. Because I read the book before I saw the show. Mm-hmm. The first book. I read the first two books. And then I couldn't keep up. Um, but. Understandable. He's he's my my character type. That was. <laughs> you know? still. I'm still bitter about that death. Yeah, me too. Because it was, it was the pointless. most surprising. Yes. And 
should not have happened and did. Yeah. Yeah. All because Joffrey just wanted it to happen. Like, yeah, just. Yeah. So there's that. Ned Stark, rest in peace, says rest in pieces. And (laughs) And if I if I had to pick someone who is in this show more than just the first season, I'd probably pick Jon Snow. Yeah. Until the last season, probably. Yeah, we're not going to talk about the last season. That's also <laughs> worth its own podcast yes, episode, the last season of Game of Thrones. I don't even know if I want to talk about it. It just makes me sad. Uh, It's exhausting to talk about because it's yeah. just... Ugh. Anyway, my favorite Game of Thrones character... We should do an episode where we talk about character deaths. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Character deaths. Yeah. How to do it right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, at least to us in ways that we would enjoy. Enjoy, enjoy, not I mean, the right word, but I, I know what you're make saying. Make it the most palatable it can be. Or the most moving. Yeah. Um, my favorite Game of Thrones character, I'm going to go with Oberyn Martell. Mm, he's a good choice. Another character that got done dirty. Yeah. <laughs> and I was so, I loved his character because he didn't take anyone's crap and he... He's a man though. True. You're right. <laughs> Straight up. You're right. Well-known man but everything was consensual, and That's his true. wife was in on it most of the time. That's true. So <laughs> I can't fault him too much. Right. Um, yeah. I was Cause, so... Because we shouldn't judge characters based on our own personal moral standings. Right, because their morals might not be the same as ours. So, of and course, they don't act world. the way that it's we would fictional. act. And it's a fictional world yeah. with completely different belief systems. So yeah. I was so... Like, I so felt for his... Mm-hmm. motivation and drive to like bring justice to the killer yeah. of his sister absolutely and his nieces and nephews yeah and he was so close and he kind of did it <laughs> yeah like he sort was of. of like sir gregor turned into just like a freaky zombie monster but he's kind of dead maybe i don't know <laughs> yeah I don't know the science behind Game of Thrones or how they pulled that off in the books he kind so of I don't did know it. either I haven't gone that far <laughs> but I was so mad I agree when he died, I was so mad. <laughs> yeah. I think I might have been more mad at that one than Ned Stark. Although Ned Stark's is still really raw. At least with Oberyn, like, I knew at that point that the show was notorious for it. I was just really hoping it wouldn't happen to him. It was also incredibly gruesome. That's true. Whereas Ned's was decapitation. And you don't and actually see it? You don't actually see it. You see Arya's face. But... Oberyn's was like disgusting whoa, whoa I can't unsee that I can't I can't scrub that image out of my brain you need some serious and I eye bleach hate after that. that I hate that I can't get that out of my head mm, yeah that was bad I would but, have loved it if they would have cut away yeah just just throwing that out there <laughs> <laughs> I'm still gonna go with Oberyn Martell as my it's favorite a, it's a Thrones. good choice and He's we, up only, there for me. we only have a couple series left that we're gonna do today um one of them is Outlander. Aww. So Outlander is a show that's still being produced yeah. at, in stars. They just had season five come out. Season five. And we have both watched Outlander up to the point that it's at now. Mm-hmm. So who, and there's a lot of characters in this show. Yeah. Um, who in Outlander would you say is your favorite uh, character? And also just if, if you haven't seen Outlander, it's really cool. You should watch it. It's yes, it's, Technically, it's a probably a romance. You yes. could classify it as a romance, but it's done very well. And I have never hated the character as much as some of the characters in Outlander. That you're supposed to hate. That you're supposed to hate. Yeah. It's um most of the time. <laughs> There's some yeah. characters that I really don't like that I feel like I'm supposed to like, but I don't. But anyway. That's some, that's another conversation. Who's your favorite character? Well, I was just gonna say, just in, if you haven't been introduced to Outland, out oh my gosh. Words are hard. If you haven't been introduced to Outlander, it's um, it is a romance, but it's it's speculative fiction because the main character Claire um, goes to the Standing Stones in Scotland and is transported back in time um, by touching the stones to like seventeen hundreds Scotland. Yeah. yeah. So there's time travel involved. Um, mm-hmm. It's very interesting. It's very, very, cool. very well done. Great music. I love the music yes. in that show. Yes. Um, casting is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. The writing is phenomenal. I've, I haven't read the books yet. It, they're on my list and they're pretty high up on my list of things to read because I have read part of the first one. Um, I had checked it out from the library, but it was going to take me too long to read because they're quite 
thick, mm-hmm. but really well written too. So highly there, there are there are quite a few sex scenes, but I find them to be tastefully done and way less pornographic than the ones in like Game of Thrones. Yes, agreed. So yeah, there is that too. Because Game of Thrones it feels gratuitous a lot of times. Yeah. Um, so my favorite character in Outlander is Jamie Fraser, um, but he's kind of the shoe in because he's the hero. Yeah. Um, but he is super likable. Um, but close second would be Murda. So those two are, I know we're supposed to do our favorites, but it's hard to pick a favorite. Yeah. It's hard sometimes. Yeah. But Jamie, mm-hmm. Jamie's up there. For my favorite from Outlander, I am going to have to go with, um, I think I'm going to go with young Ian. Oh, he's great. Who is Jamie's, Jamie Fraser's nephew. Yeah. And he has a really interesting arc um, because he's Scottish Mm -hmm. and he ends up in places you would not expect a 1700 Scotsman to end up. No, and not at all. He does some interesting things. Him and also Fergus. Fergus is another one. They kind of have like a duo thing. Yeah. They kind of grew up together. Mm -hmm. So I I like when Fergus and Ian get to interact on screen. That's really cool. I will say that the, the villain... Um, criteria being removed does eliminate a couple of characters for me because there's a couple of villains. The, the few characters that are kind of gray could be villains or heroes depending on like which episode you're in. Huh. Um, thinking of um, Graham McTavish's character. Oh. Who is um, Jamie's uncle. Um, oh, shoot. Oh Sorry. Dougal. Dougal McKenzie. Yes. Um, Dougal is someone that I love to hate. I think he was the most enjoyable for me to watch, but yes. I it's hard to imagine him not being an antagonist. He is he is very antagonistic a lot of the time. But he's also on the good guy side a lot of the time. So yeah. he's he's a hard one. He's very but, gray. But I, I do really enjoy Graham McTavish's performance in that. Yeah. Who's also in The Hobbit. He's a wonderful actor. He's phenomenal. Um, what, else, what other series do we have left over there? There's one more. Okay, we, and can, this, we can do one more. This is interesting because it's an anime. Oh, <gasps> It's Hunter Hunter. On my list. Yes. So this is the anime that uh, my wife Hope and I watched with you. Yeah. And and you guys have seen it a couple of times. I've only, we, I've only seen it the one time. It is my all time favorite anime. It's so good. Hands down. It is my favorite. So if any of you are into anime and you haven't seen Hunter Hunter, I would highly recommend it. It is on Netflix up through a certain season. Um, yeah. Not the whole thing, but I think they have the whole thing on Crunchyroll. Although on Crunchyroll, it is subbed. You can't watch it. You can't watch it dubbed, which um, in my opinion is better, but you you'd know. rather watch it subbed or dubbed subbed. Okay. So for me, I prefer things that are dubbed because I have a hard time reading what's on the screen and also watching what the characters are doing. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I'm kind of a slow reader. <laughs> um go figure Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> but i um so i i prefer dubbed but mm-hmm. but um yeah in which i loved hunter hunter it was great yeah it's got it's it got... was it was a new genre for me because i hadn't really watched much if any anime before watching hunter hunter mm-hmm. I'm trying to think if i maybe like the oddball i was thinking i was trying to think of some other ones like wink was that one that i have no that's idea kind of anyway I could be making up what that was called. <laughs> so I might have just named something that doesn't exist. Maybe. But I feel like there were a couple of like anime things that were on when we were kids that I would occasionally watch, but nothing yep. that I followed really seriously. Mm-hmm. So this is my first like, oh, I guess we watched Attack on Titan. Yeah, we did watch Summit, but we were, we're not up to date on that. We're not. So but I yeah. guess it's not my first anime, but it my, my first anime that I've completed. Yes, Hunter. Well, yes, the manga isn't complete, but you've watched everything that has been made for right. the anime. Right. Um, so who is your favorite Hunter well, Hunter character? It's kind of stereotypical, but I'm going to pick Kilawa. I have a lot of emotions for him. I just mm-hmm. feel bad for him a lot because his family situation kind of sucks. Yeah. And spoilers for if you haven't seen Hunter Hunter, um, skip ahead. But uh, Kilawa is like a, he, he comes from a family of assassins and was yeah. raised as an assassin and was just like really had a rough upbringing because of that and was pretty much tortured a lot of the time. Yeah. And um, really weird family dynamics. Really bizarre. But he's really lovable. Oh yeah. Mostly because of the interactions he has with the actual main character, which is Gone, who yeah. is um, 
just this super likable kid. Yeah. That's, that's the other thing. Kila and Gon are like 12. Yeah. And, or 13 or something. They're, they're younger. Yeah. And, um, they just have this really awesome best friend dynamic and they're just really fun to watch. Yeah. Um, that being said, my favorite character in Hunter Hunter, I think would have to be, I almost have to say Kilua too, but, um, just because he is, like you said, for all the reasons you said, and I love watching him and going on screen. Yeah. I don't know if I'd go as far as say Gon is my favorite character. Uh, the, the thing is my actual favorite characters from this anime are bad guys. <laughs> That's fair. Um, which we'll, we'll do we'll it later. Yeah. Okay. I guess for my favorite, um, good guy, I will just stick with, um, Kilua, maybe Gon, but yeah. Yeah. That's fair. I also, there's like in the first season, there's like four that you're keeping track of and that, that group right. is super fun. All four of them together. Yeah, so. I agree. I would highly recommend that anime if you like um, things like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which I haven't seen, but I need to see. Um, it's a it's a very good um, adventure type story. It's I mean, there are fights. There's a lot of fighting, but I wouldn't call it like a like a fighting anime like Dragon Ball Z or um, Naruto. Like that's just something that kind of happens, but. I guess except for one of the arcs is pretty much like a All fighting fight. pit, <laughs> but um, anyway, um, I love Hunter Hunter. It's it's also got one of the best theme songs ever. Yeah, but that's good. Yeah, so that's everything that I had written down, and I feel like we have talked enough for this episode. Probably this is probably a long one for episode yeah, two. But, I think we're probably good. Yeah, so that's favorite characters. Next, yeah. I think we are going to do one on favorite villains. Yeah. And that's really exciting because I love me a good villain. It's one of my favorite parts about genre fiction is a nice, compelling villain that you love to hate. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But in the meantime, we'll talk to you next time. Go read or watch something cool, and we will talk at you then. Yeah. Later. Bye.